Good evening, friends of the creaking door. This is your host, bidding you enter the inner sanctum. Come in, come in. And now for tonight's tortured tantrum. Ever have an ancestor who's dead but won't lie down? Hmm. Can't happen, huh? Okay, bub, hang on and we'll demonstrate. We're in an ancient cemetery hidden in a lost valley somewhere outside an old New England town. The stone face of a mausoleum reads 1790. Behind its iron door, the ancient dead sleep in sealed vault. Beside the dead, trapped in the mausoleum, is a man. He's haggard, glassy-eyed, like a man suspended between life and death. The man rallies his dying energies to tear at the door. To break his hand in a final desperate attempt at escape. I gotta get out. I gotta get out of the bush. It's not good. It's not good. Thank you. Thank you. You can't let me die. Don't let me die. The rest of it is yours. Go drink it all of it. Take it for yourself, only stop, stop. So I looked at empty hand, broke, without a dime in the world. Exactly the way I began. Exactly the way I began. So six weeks ago, I came to this jerkwater town of Hillcrest to claim a worthless white elephant. A state called Highgate. It's been in my family since the Battle of Bunker Hill. I was the missing heir. Finding me cost the trustees more money than the estate was worth. Mm, that's the picture, Mr. Lyon. The big estate, but the land's been neglected too long and the buildings are about ready to fall down. Now, if the inheritance raised your hopes any, I'm well, What about cash, other property? Stocks, maybe? No, the tax collector sees what little there was for arrears. There isn't a cash penny in sight for a young fella, unless you... Well, unless you chance to run into your grandfather's boodle. My... Great grandfather? Yep, your great grandfather, Daniel Zanga. Folks around here say old Daniel salted a pile away and walks the halls of Highgate watching it and waiting for the right descendant to come along. Wait a minute, you're talking over my head. Oh, I'm just repeating local bogeyman talk. <laughs> See, according to old records here in Hillcrest, your great grandfather was a man of fearful omens and prophecies. You're not saying he had supernatural powers. Well, the records hint he had. There's a paper in the files that accuses old Daniel Zenger of consorting with the devil. And there's another paper ordering his execution for the same thing. My great-grandfather was put to death? If we're to believe the records, yes. What did you mean by that remark, waiting for the right descendant to come along? Oh, legend. The old Daniel Zenger swore his money would keep until an avenging descendant came along. <laughs> but don't you get, go get no ideas, young fella. <laughs> Now, uh, now, if there's anything I can do for you... Yeah, there is. Run the missing air 20 bucks, huh? I'll need train fare out of here. The train out of Hillcrest would have been the smart play. But curiosity got the better of me. I wanted to see Highgate once. I'm just out of town. I hitchhiked part of the way, and I hooked it the rest of the way with a storm threatening... Highgate was more run down than could describe. I stood outside watching the shadows pile around that big heap of junk. It had a look about it. As if, as if once it pulled you in, you were shut away forever. Before I knew it, I was heading inside. As if I couldn't help myself. But it wasn't pulling. I was being pushed in. As if there were someone at my back. I was inside, and the door banged shut. It was the wind, I told myself. The door had been open, and the wind had blown it closed. But I had a feeling that I wasn't alone. I felt a presence near me, pushing me toward a sputtering yellow light in a square library room. No. Who? Who are you? They want us. It wouldn't be... It was Inger Lyon. I'm Ted Lyon. What are you doing here? 
At the moment, making notes on the town librarian. What are those books you got there? The remnants of Daniel Zenger's personal library. There are many fascinating writings here. My great-grandfather's writings, you said? Yes. In addition to his other, uh, reputed talents, Daniel Zenger was a prolific penman. What do the manuscripts say? I can't tell as yet. The language is English, but much of it is in an old, obscure dialect. I would need to examine and interpret them. That is, if you have no objection. No, I haven't. Uh... You can make a bundle of this stuff, take it along with you, and dope out what it says on one condition. One condition? Uh-huh. That you tell me what it says first. I dropped around to see the old librarian the next night. The shades were down. Library hours were over. Old Hillary Waters let me in. His face seemed to be burning with excitement. I've made an amazing discovery. A most amazing discovery. Your great-grandfather was put to death. Oh, that's no discovery. Don't interrupt, please. I have documentary proof that Daniel Zenger was a man of extraordinary vision and prophecy. And I present my proof? First, tell me, was he rich? From all indications, fabulously rich. He accumulated a princely fortune. And he did what with it? I cannot say. But that is of minor importance. It is the remarkable scope of his prophecies I am principally interested in. Okay, spill it. What did he prophesy? In these manuscripts, written in the 18th century, in about the year 1790, Daniel Zenger predicted Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo, our civil war between the states, and the rise of Abraham Lincoln, and the First and Second World War. You're kidding. I'm in earnest. There were other remarkable predictions. Your... Your name is Peter Zenger Lyon. Four generations removed from Daniel Zenger. Yeah? What about it? This obscure passage I came across in his book of predictions. In the fourth generation, a lion will come to the crest of the hill. And then, over high gate. Well, what are you eyeing me for? Me? You're thinking the reference is to me? Yes. I must think that. A lion. That is you, plainly. Theodore Lion. And you're the fourth generation. And the crest of the hill is Hill Crest. This town. And you're the master of Highgate now. What does the rest of it say? He will first silence the waters. Then capture the jewel from the king. Thirdly, after seven days of wanton darkness, he will fling a tarnished stone into the earth. And a flame of the sky will show him the four keys. There's a final line. Read it. And the lion will sit with a ransom at his feet, and the winds will steal him from the wrath of the world. Funny change had come over the old librarian. He looked as if he'd run out of the room if I wasn't standing right smack between him and the door. I started toward him slowly. That uh, prophecy you read to me, if there's any truth in it, it means that if I complete the three steps referred to in those clues, I'll reach a certain four keys. And lay my hands on a fortune. Yeah, yes. It purports to mean that. That's not quibble, huh? It means just that, period. Now, boiling certain words down. Words like silence, capture, and fling. The three steps mean three murders. Believe me, it is madness to accept or even interpret them literally. Let's skip the weasel talk. It boils down to those three murders, doesn't it? No. Liar. First, he will silence the waters. That's you, Hillary Waters. I must first silence you. No, it's insane. You can't run away, old man. I've got to silence you. (laughs) The chair came down on his skull and he dropped. And my thumb on his windpipe for a couple of minutes. Eh. And I'd satisfied the first clue to a princely ransom. I'd silenced the waters. He will silence the waters. Is there anybody around whose name is stream, flood, lake, or maybe river? Hmm. <laughs> Old librarian waters had a look in the book. 
And the prophecy took. His name's Muddy Waters now. A lion will reign over the high king. Yeah. If our hectic hero keeps on exterminating quaint old scholars, I predict a lion will take it on the land. <laughs> Let's uh, verify my prediction, shall we? Okay, lion, roar. I propped old Hillary Waters on a chair at his desk. There wasn't a telltale mark on him. He looked as if his heart had backed up on him while he was poring over his books. I moved into Highgate. With old Daniel Zenger's second clue burning in my brain. He will capture the jewel from the king. What did it mean? I couldn't even begin to figure it out. All I could do was wait. And watch. A month dragged by. Then one night at the railroad depot, I watched the signal flag go up. Watching the trains roar by and sometimes stop was a way of getting a peek at the world outside of Hillcrest. I watched a girl get off. Young. Made up and dolled up in a style that yelled for a second look. She looked like my world. A big town, bright lights, fast talk. I moved toward her like a guy in the desert starts for a pitcher of water. The funny thing, she was coming right at me, too. Could you direct me to the nearest hotel, handsome? I could even carry your bag there. For a price. A local wolf, hmm? What's the price? Smile. <laughs> Okay, now pick up the bag. I'm Ted Lyon. You? Ruby Myers. Your business in Hillcrest? What are you, the local DA? <laughs> no, I'm just a guy with time on his hands. <laughs> I'm an advance agent. Advance agent? Uh-huh, ballyhoo. I nail up posters, hire a light local hall, and I start the promotion and publicity going. It's really a man's job, but we women do it better. Who are you publicizing? Slugger Conlon, the middleweight prize fighter. Conlon's barnstorming, putting on exhibition bouts. He'll be here Friday night. Well, uh, what are you doing after working hours? Between now and Friday night. Oh, I, uh, haven't thought about it yet. Got any suggestions? Any? Sister, I got a million. Before the end of the week, we knew each other a whole lot better. Walks, dances, movies... There was someone behind me, pushing me, as close to her as I could get. You're as nervous as a cat tonight. What's eating you? Uh, nothing. Uh, what are you doodling? Doodling? Yeah, you've been scribbling absentmindedly for an hour. Well, let's see it. He will capture the jewel from the king. That's a funny doodle. What does it mean? Oh, nothing, nothing. The line I read from a poem somewhere, maybe... Um, Ted. What? We, um, we got to break it up after tonight. I'm, um, I'm somebody's girl. In love with Slugger Conlon? No. Then why brush me off? Well, I've got to. The king's crazy jealous of me. If he saw you around, there'd be murder. Did you say the king? Did you call Slugger Conlon the king? That's his nickname. I'm up for... Well, what, what's wrong? Nothing, nothing. Just the idea of losing you, that's all. Ruby. Yeah? Just came to me. Ruby is a precious jewel. Oh, oh now you're making with the sweet talk again. Come on, jewel. Let's have a last dance before the king claims you. Capture the jewel from the king. Second clue in the prophecy had been right under my nose for a week. But I hadn't seen it. When Conlon came in one day ahead of his party, I was right there at the depot waiting for him. Ruby was back at the hotel, freshening up for her boyfriend. Slugger Conlon? That's me, kid. I'm Ted Lyon. Uh, I represent the town athletic committee. Uh, welcome to Hillcrest. Oh, thanks, kid. Where can I dig a shower, a steak, and a flop in this flea town? My car's over there. Pile in. I'll drive you to a hotel. Deal. The town's all head up about the exhibition, Bart King. <laughs> you know my nickname, huh? 
Let's put on a show. Just everybody turn out. A buck sixty-five ahead. Hey, uh, how far to town is it? Another half mile. What are you stopping? A uh, flat tire. There's a break for you, but I love this town. Well, where do you keep your jack? Don't bother worrying about the jack, Conlon. Hey, I don't see no flat. Say, what gives? What's a gun for? You, King. This is stick-up? Huh. I've got a plug nickel, kid. Turn around. Sure. But you won't find a sound of me, I'll tell you. Huh. The king was dead. I buried him in an abandoned quarry, baggage and all. His party arrived the next day. They stewed over why Slugger Carlin hadn't showed up, and then they left the following Monday. Nobody thought of making a search for him, checking with the railroad. Luck was with me. The king had pulled more than one disappearing act before, and his crowd was used to it. The party left. But the jewel stayed. A week later, I married her. Where are we? Honeymoon, handsome. In Highgate. We'll spend seven days there. Alone. Thirdly, after seven days of darkness and want. There was only one way of interpreting the third clue in the prophecy... I closed Highgate to the world, and I settled down to seven days of darkness and famine. It was slow agony. But without it, I'd never find the four keys. Without it, a lion could never sit with a ransom at his feet. The first ruby resisted. Soon she began to suspect that she'd married a crazy man. Ted. Ted, I've got to get out of here. You'll stick for seven days. No, not even seven more minutes. I'm getting out of here right now. You'll stick it out, I said. I'll have to chain you to the floor. You're mad. You're crazy, raving mad. No food, no daylight. Just endless dark. But seven days passed. I was ready for the next clue. He will fling a tarnished stone to the earth, and a flame in the sky will show him the four keys. Fling a tarnished stone into the earth. What did it mean? Ruby! Oh, oh leave me alone. <laughs> leave me, darling. Come outside, Ruby, into the daylight. <laughs> Ruby, I'll make all this up to you. All this suffering, I swear I will, Ruby. I'll sit with a ransom at my feet and you'll sit right beside me and there'll be gold and trinkets. No. You'll sit in the hot seat and I'll sit... Twenty feet away with the witnesses, watching you burn. What do you mean, watching me burn? I sat there, starving, with my body dying by inches, but my mind was alive. I could think. I figured out your crazy doodling and all your crazy recitation. He will capture a jewel from the king. Well, I figured out what that meant. You better stop talking, Ruby. Try and stop me. King. Slugger Conlon. I know why he never showed up that night. You met him and killed him. Ruby stood there, pale and beat up looking, accusing me. The clothes were ragged. She'd lived in them for seven days and seven nights. The hard illusion of beauty was gone. Hunger had aged her seven years. The jewel had lost her sparkle. The tarnish of a misspent and wasted life was all over her. It was a voice behind me. The voice of someone whose hands were pushing me toward Ruby. Pushing me toward the fourth clue in the prophecy. It was old Daniel Zenger. You're... You're going to kill me. Yes. I didn't know then, Ruby, that you were the jewel and the tiny stone both. It's no use trying to resist, Ruby. I'm too, too tired to My finger's on your throat for just a little <laughs> while. It won't hurt. Too much. <laughs> she hung limply in my arms. And I flung her to the earth. And then there was a flame in the sky. A lightning spear. It seemed to fix in the sky. 
pointing like an arrow on an illuminated map. The flame in the sky will show him the four keys. I followed the arrow across the countryside. There was a wind behind me pushing me on. Old Daniel Zenger was behind me driving me. I reached an ancient cemetery that was hidden in the Lost Valley. Then the flame was gone from the sky. And in front of me was a mausoleum. The date on its stone face read 1790. And under it was the family name. Key. The door was unlocked. I turned the knob and opened it. And the wind slammed it shut behind me. The iron door had a knob on the outside only. There was no knob on the inside. I'm in here now. Trapped. Too weak to move. Hearing voices. And the wind. Dead are all around me, waiting for me to close my eyes and join them. What is Connell and Ruby? I'm in here to stay. The ransom, my feet. Cold coin. Think it's to go back to the time of Queen Elizabeth and Sir Walter Raleigh. With the lights they going out for me. Jackpot I won. No good to me now. No good to me. The lion will sit with a ransom at his feet, and the winds will seal him from the wrath of the world. <laughs> Now, there's an industrious lion for you. He built his own cage. <laughs> a pifflicated prophet named Pennypacker once said, Lions in stone cages shouldn't throw predictions. <laughs> but some fellas won't do for a buck. Kind of brings a moral popping out of a wide crack in my brain. If a dead ancestor cozies up to you, start traveling, Bob. Fan out on a horizontal line before all you can get is vertical transportation. Sanctum has been brought to you through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.